Hello everybody, welcome back to another Saturday Anything Goes. You know, I still have not figured out why I can't do my live straight from Facebook. So mm, we're using my phone again and I hope the quality um, is good enough for everybody to view it. Anyway, I hope everyone is having a good Saturday. It's been bright and sunny here today which was, oh my gosh, we're just not used to it. We're used to rain and gloomy skies. So I woke up this morning with the sun coming through my window and thought, what, what? <laughs> anyway, it is nice. And I think we're going to be free from rain for at least a couple of days. So maybe we can dry out a bit. All right, well, enough about that. So I uh, wanted to do something a little bit different tonight. I have a friend who likes to do journals. Not big ones, but just kind of mini journals. Um, and I usually make her at least uh, a couple of them a year. And I thought, you know, I can't remember if I did one when the fall started, so I'm just gonna do one now and tell her it's for spring. So these are the items that I have. This actually came from Stampin' Up! Um, and it's just got grid paper in it, but she likes to draw too, so I thought that grid paper would come in handy. Um, and then I wanted to use this beautiful paper uh, from the Painted Poppy Suite. It's so, so easy to make a quick card, but I thought this would also be great to wrap around the journal. So, so pretty. And rather than just do this paper all by itself, I thought I would start with some Blackberry Bliss. Uh, it's a nice heavyweight cardstock and so it will give some bulk, some substance to uh, the journal itself. I also want to be able to close it with a ribbon, uh, so that'll come in handy for that. Let me just see if I can bring you guys up on my Facebook page so I can at least see everybody when they pop in. I couldn't do it last week, but uh, what the heck, we'll try it for this week. And I still can't. Oh, there we are. Yay! And of course, I'm sideways. Oh, golly gee, gang, I am so sorry. I thought I had my phone to where it would reverse, but we'll work with this. And when I finish it, I will go ahead and flip it over to the right side. And um, that way you'll be able to see me. But at least I can see you all. Hi, Roz. So glad that you joined. All right. So I went ahead and measured what my book was. And it's basically seven and an eighth by all the way around ten and a half. And that's what we're going to cut our cardstock at. So let me just bring this out. Get my these out of the way so I can use my full extension on my trimmer. And it would help if I had my cardstock. So again, the dimensions I want are seven and an eighth by ten and a half. And since this is eight and a half, it's a no-brainer. I would do my seven and an eighth from that side. So seven and one eighth should be right there. And I haven't done a prototype of this, so I'm kind of winging it. And then we said it was ten and a half this way. So right there. All right. Now if I bring the book in, it should have just a tiny bit of overlap and it does. Now I could just bend and fold this, but what I found was when I did that, I got those little crinkly things that I didn't like. So I'm going to go ahead and score it instead, and I think that will help. If we know that our halfway mark is going to be at five and a quarter, I want to score it on either side of that. So I'll put this in here, and my first score is going to be, so half is going to be four and a quarter. I want my score to be just under that, so I'm going to do it at that 16th mark. So let me see, what's that going to be? That's going to be one, two, three. We'll do it right at that mark, right there. I can find my thing here. All right, so our quarter mark, just to go over it again, our quarter mark is right there. That's the halfway mark. 
right? But I want to score it just one tick past that on either side. And I'll just turn it around and repeat the process. So there's my five and a quarter. I want one tick past that. All right, and if I hold this up, hopefully you can see those score marks are really close to each other, but that's gonna keep it from doing the crinkle. So let me put that away for the moment. The easiest way to fold this, I've found, is to put an object like your bone folder up against the score line and very gently lift. Probably help if I did it this way. So I've got it right at that first one. A ruler would work well too. So I want to put it right at that mark. I can barely see it myself. And just gently lift it up and press it. And then the same thing, I'm going to bring it back down here, right on that score mark, lift and press. So I've done it on that side. I'll bring it around and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm up against that score mark, lift, and just pressing it in with my hand. And this way we can ensure that we get a nice even score mark. All right. So that made it pretty easy, and if I fold right there, you can see there are my two score marks. I'm just going to go in and reinforce each one, just so that I end up with a really nice edge to the center. So I've gotten that one done, now I need to do the other one, which is right here. I tell you, you can go cross-eyed doing this. Now let me just put that up and make sure that I've got that in the right spot. And then fold it. Okay, so what that's going to do, like I said, is just going to give us a nice little buffer to where when I do bend it, and for some reason that one just doesn't want to bend. So let me try that one more time. It may be that my bone folder is a little too thick. All right. So we've got our two edges. We'll line them up just like that so that they're even. And then we have our nice mark. Okay. And like I said, you don't have to do that, but to me, it just made this center edge look really nice. It doesn't have any of the crinkle spots in it. All right, so I'm happy with that. And before I glue that down, we're going to go ahead and cut our DSP. Now, I thought about cutting the DSP and wrapping it all the way around, just like we did our um, Blackberry Bliss. But I really want to cut it into two panels. They're a little bit shorter uh, than the Blackberry Bliss to make kind of a frame. So we know that we've got five and a quarter by, this should be seven and an eighth. So I want to cut it just shorter than that. And my seven and an eighth is this way. So I'm going to be very careful that I am cutting it in the right direction. It is easy to get the uh, pattern kind of mixed up. So I want my 7 and 8 to go this way. So we will do 7. And I want it a little bit shorter than an 8, right? So I'm actually going to do it just right at 7. So that's our first piece. And then we know that going this way is five and a quarter. So I'm going to cut this at five and an eighth. Five and an eighth. And that gives us just a little bit of a border all the way around, which I really, really liked. All right, so we'll do the same with this piece, five and an eighth. All 
And there we have it. So that's all the cutting that I need to do. Hi, Kathy. Thanks for joining. Okay. Now, a little tip. Because if I just put this down, you know, if I put my tear and tape down or whatever, sometimes this shifts around a little bit. So what I like to do is stick just a little bit of snail in the middle. Oop, that's not snail, is it? This is. Because the snail um, will allow me to kind of position things. So I'm just going to do an X on this side. And now I can lay this in here and line it up. I gotta stand up to do this. And because I'm using snail, that is a little um, repositionable, if you will. But I think I've got it okay there. Now I can do this. This is perfect. So I'll go ahead and work on this side to use my tear and tape. And then I can undo it from the snail and use my tear and tape there. So just a little tidbit, a little repositioning trick. And I need it because like I said, mine always ends up cattywampus. So I'll get out my tape here and run it. A piece there. I'll do another piece here. Then I'm going to do a piece that runs from here to here. So that'll give the book something to grab onto. Okay. There we go. You guys, while I was out today, I had to go pick up the mail and do a couple errands. And I had to go to the drugstore. And I thought while I was there, I'd pick up some um, extra hand sanitizer because you know you can never have too much on hand the shelves were empty so I went to the next store I had to go to and I looked for a hand sanitizer the shelves were empty so mm, I guess it's good that I ordered hand sanitizer a few days ago I get it in bulk from bulk apothecary because lord if you haven't gotten it by now <laughs> you may not be able to get it okay so I did that and as you saw, I was able to just lift that off because my cover of my little notebook here is a little bit slick, so I knew that I would be able to reposition it. So let's put our tear and tape down on this side. All right. So, yep, the news has just been full of COVID-19. Keeping an eye on it because hubby has COPD. Um, so, and we do have, I think we're up to six cases in Georgia now. Um, so just kind of trying to keep an eye on things to know that we have everything we need for him and that he doesn't get exposed. And he's a little paranoid about it. It's kind of cute though. All right, so I'm just going to smush this down so I can release the backing. There we go. All right. And now, because I already have the other side done, I can just lay that right down and voila. So we've got just a thin, thin border all the way around, which is what I was going for. All right. We're going to be gluing this down to the front and the back. But before we do that, there's a couple of things. First of all, I wanted to put, not necessarily a sentiment exactly, but um, maybe some encouraging words or something like that uh, in this nice white space that we have. And I also want to use some of our uh, poppy ribbon because I thought that would be just really, really pretty, especially since I do want to go ahead and have it tie at the side. So I toyed with putting the ribbon on top, which I could do, or I can attach the ribbon underneath that panel. 
and just have it sticking out on the sides. So I'm still not quite sure what I'm going to do. I'm going to think about that for a minute. But first of all, I do want to get that um, little encouragement saying on here before I glue anything down. So let me get out a piece of scratch paper here. And I love the sentiment that's in Forever Blossoms. Cherish every moment of this day. I thought that's just the perfect thing to put on a journal. So that's what we're going to do. Now I've got my, um, hello, my stamp <laughs> on my block. And we could use the apparatus for this, but it's so long that I think it fits absolutely perfectly right in the center. And I feel pretty comfortable with just stamping it as long as my, uh, what you call it, my thing, stamp sticker is on straight. That's why I brought out the piece of scratch paper because I just want to, and pardon my head if it gets in the way, I'm going to try and do this straight just to see how that works. And it works very, very well. So I feel pretty confident with being able to ink it up and lay it straight down. Make sure I get it inked up really well. Sorry if the camera's wobbling. And then I know exactly where I want it. So let me pull this down, trying to line it up with my grid paper as well. Hopefully my head doesn't knock the camera. I'm thinking right about there. Worked pretty good. And I'm also going to do it on this piece. So we have it on the front and the back. So let me line this up. Hello, Miss Weenie. And stamp it down. All right, that is all the stamping I think that we're going to do. All right, now let's talk about the ribbon. So, another reason I wanted to stamp that is because I'll be able to see just how much room I have if I want to put the ribbon on the outside. And so that would actually work pretty well if I did it right there. Kind of liking that. So, let me see. I want enough ribbon to where I'll be able to comfortably tie it. So I know that's probably going to be too much ribbon, but I do want to tuck this underneath here. Now that's one way I could do it, is I could just glue that down, just like that. And of course I would glue the ribbon all the way across and just leave the edges free. So I could do that, or I could simply make the ribbon go all the way around like that and have the two ends out here and you know the more I think about that the more I think that's the way I want to do it so let's see if I do that so I want to have plenty of ribbon to tie a bow and that is probably way more than I need but it's much easier to cut off or to trim it back down than it is to add on right so let's do that all right so what I'm gonna do since I'm not gonna lay the ribbon underneath we'll go ahead and glue these down I'm gonna use good old liquid glue for that oh that's pretty on that side too And the reason I don't recommend snail for this is because you're not going paper to paper, you're going paper to cardstock, but also because this front piece will get a little bit of wear and tear on it. So we want to make sure that we have a glue or we, you could use tear and tape, but you really want it to grip. So we've got that part. Oops, turn it over and we'll do the same here. Such a beautiful pattern. 
and I love it with Blackberry Bliss. I just think that's the perfect cardstock to use with it. Alrighty. So there we go. Okay. So now I can glue down my ribbon. So let me find the halfway mark there, or about halfway. So I know it's gonna go about like that. You could just use a few glue dots, but because this is gonna be open and closed multiple times, I'm thinking I wanna use my tear and tape. That way I'll have a good seal on it. You could use liquid glue, but in my opinion, the glue kinda can soak through the ribbon and make it a bit tacky. Uh, so I wasn't really crazy about that. All right. I'm going to put my tear and tape, hopefully straight, from there to there. And I'm just doing one side at a time. There we go. And right like that. Okay, that's maybe a little crooked, but that's all right. It's handmade, right? We don't do perfect. And I'm gonna do the same here with my tape. See where I need to put it. Well, come on. Quit moving on me. Maybe use my grid paper. That would help, Linda. So, right there to right there. And you know, I see little booklets like this, little journals. Sometimes Michaels will have them for, um, they come in a three pack for maybe two dollars just depends on if they're having a sale you can use a coupon so i uh, have picked up quite a few that way as well all right so we've got that and it's plenty easy for us to go ahead and tie this up let's see if linda can make a decent bow today not bad not bad. Pull it tight like that. I really like that. Of course, I probably should have tied it so it would go that way. But you get the general idea. And then I can trim up the tails as we like them a little long, but maybe not quite so long as it was. I also have a little tassel that we could use which I kind of like things that um, hang down and we could attach it to the thread or the ribbon rather let's see how that would look if I had a little charm I might put that on there as well maybe a, a couple of cute little gold beads and let me tie this upside down so that it's going the other way. That's better. And our thread, our little tassel is right there. So I can get it to hang down just like that. All right, you go the other way. All right. So just like that. And I love it. I think it looks good, but let's just put a few little sparklies on it. Because you know we gotta have our sparkles. So let's see what I can get into today. Oh, I just love that purple. It's so pretty. Alright. And I happen to know that the peacock rhinestones that purple might work because it's deep enough so we might could do that we could just use as they fall all over the place 
um, some champagne ones, but I think since everything's pretty cool in here, uh, champagne might not be the ideal uh, one to put on there. So let's see if I have anything else in here. Nope, I think that's about it. I could color a few pearls, but I'm liking these. So I'm just going to put a few here and there. Those are pretty. I know the purple is a little bit lighter than the Blackberry Bliss, but put a couple there and maybe put a couple. Ooh, this green is really pretty too. That would blend in really well. So let's see, where might I want the green? How about I put them in just a few of the splotches? They'll still show up, so I'll put one there, put one there, and let's do another one right here. I'm not going to put any on the back because obviously it's going to be resting on the back and we don't want to put any pressure on the rhinestones to where they would poke anything. So I think I'm happy with it. What do you guys think? Hey Amy, hi Linda. Yeah, Roz, I think that she's really, really going to love it. She is kind of a special um, week for her. Her husband has been on the kidney transplant list for as long as I've known her, which is two or three years. He just got his kidney transplant this week. So if you wouldn't mind lifting up some prayers for him, um, that would be awesome. But that was another reason I wanted to give her this so that when she's in the hospital with him, um, she can go ahead and, and jot down her notes and feelings and then this then becomes a part of the memory of everything. So, well I want to thank you all for bearing with me with my sideways video here. Um, I will go ahead and um, when I edit it, I'll turn it to where it's the right side. Okay, anybody have any questions? Thanks, Roz. All right, well, I will let you all get back to your Saturday night. Still hoping to figure out this Dad Burn Facebook thing, but at least I can film you with my phone. Um, anyway, I hope you have a blessed day tomorrow, and I'll see you next Saturday. Bye-bye now.